My name is Sydney and I graduated as a biology major in 2018. It will always be home to me, family, my culture, as well as having an open mind. Being more comfortable about being uncomfortable, which has only made my relationships and conversations richer as well as my pull to community medicine stronger. And my want to pursue medicine stem from, I definitely did not understand the gravity of what it meant to lose a family member, but I'll never ever forget how I felt. The prompt I was given was to describe my past experiences with physicians as well as some positive and negative traits that I would want to emulate and not emulate respectively. Let's start off with the negative. I was very hesitant to seek treatment for it since I saw how badly my skin reacted but it got to the point where it was so excruciatingly painful and fibrous that I looked into different options and cortisone injections were one of them. He didn't seem very personable. I was just another patient on his list that he had to get through that day. Granted, I understand he was probably really busy or has been in the profession for such a long time to see that every single person I have to have a deep, thorough conversation with. Just the simple things I caught on and it kind of just affected how I saw him. So for example, he didn't ask for my name and he didn't really introduce himself. He kind of just opened the sheet, saw the setup that the MA set out. I'm like, all right, keloid injection? Cool, let's do it. When I would ask these questions, I could kind of get a sense of he didn't really have the patience or want to kind of explain it. It was more so him responding, well, it's meant to do this and honestly, you should be okay. I always felt like I was offending him when I asked him to do certain things. For example, he was new to me, so granted maybe he didn't know, but from my history, I know that I get infections very easily. Use antiseptic, antibiotics, bandage it. This finger will swell up with all the pus that gathers. Even a paper cut or a dog bite, I know that will turn into infection. I've had multiple abscesses and they're not fun. <laughs> they're really, really not fun. He didn't want to wear gloves, no washing the hands. And I know sometimes like when you disinfect the area, it's fine. But in my case, he didn't disinfect the area at all. It was more so of a needle, poke, insert, buy. But conversely, I was very fortunate to work with a physician at a free clinic who embodied a lot of qualities that inspired me to be that kind of doctor one day. I noticed the way she communicated, she always had warmth and patience, whether it be to her students that she was teaching, her staff, so whether it was a front desk, the social worker, pharmacist, everyone she talked to, she talked to with respect, even me. But she also was not shy to say, hey, like, I appreciate you or you're doing a great job. I remember how that made me feel and honestly, that just motivated me to just want to do my best work to best help her and treat her patients. Second, she had a lot of cultural competence or just awareness of the demographics she was serving as well as how their background and their specific stories contributed to their health. Realizing that this is their situation, what can we do to help? What can we do to make sure that they get their necessary medications free of charge or that they know exactly where to go or they have referrals where we know that they can find steady, reliable transport to and from. And lastly, this really amazed me because being Spanish speaking is something that is really important to connect to a lot of patients who maybe don't know how to speak English or have recently just moved here. And she actually mentioned that it was something that she took upon herself to train and learn and just really work at it to make sure that this was a skill set and this was a tool that she can use to build that trust with patients and make them feel comforted and safe and just really listened and valued. When is it appropriate to participate in assisted suicide of a patient? and why or why not is it appropriate. This topic in particular is very controversial in terms of ending something as sacred as human life. It is first off considered legal in the state that I am practicing in for this even to be a viable option and whether this person has openly expressed either through living will who their wishes themselves after having a psychiatric evaluation if they are in a mind state to make this grand of a decision mitigate the constant sense of pain that they are in and enduring because of their physical and health state or if there's a possibility of no longer returning to a state where they are conscious or able to have any quality of life that they deem worth while. So why I would see this as appropriate is I believe all patients have a choice to live as they want to. As a provider, I will never openly give someone the tools to take away life or to do any harm to other people. My responsibility is to educate and care and take in consideration what patients want. Granted that they are in the mind state to truly know what they want and be firm that this decision is the best decision for them. So watching these clips, there's some things that I think I could do to improve. I do like my pace. 
I do like the eye contact that I make with my camera, but essentially what I think I can improve on is just getting to the point in a more concise and direct way. The organization of my answers as well as not losing the person who's talking to me. There is a lot I want to say, but by prefacing so much or adding context or story to this and that, I'm not really hitting my point. So at the end of it all, even though yes, I do say a lot more words, there isn't a lot of depth and there isn't a lot of definitive, yes, this is how I feel and this is what we think we should do. My two cents about myself. Full sense. Describe to someone how to tie your shoes without using any hand motions. So let's begin. Here today, we are going to learn how to tie our shoes. So let me ask, do you have any experience tying shoes before? Yeah. Yes? Okay. So we'll just do a little refresher course, shall we? So the whole objective of tying our shoes is just to make sure that we don't trip over our laces and just to make sure that they're really tight and compact on our feet. Break this down step by step, but if at any point you find that you want some clarifications or to ask any questions, don't hesitate, just let me know. And I want you to pull those out in front of you, um, straight in front of your body. Can I take a look and tell me? On the same shoe, on the same shoe, oh, okay. on the same shoe. Thank you for the clarification. The right one on top, I want you to actually pull that and go under the left shoelace. Pull, so it's both flat on the tongue of the shoe. Hold it until it looks like a bunny ear. On top of the left bunny ear, perfect and as a unit, so make sure that there's no hole or nothing gets in, oops, there's no Do I think medicine should be more about changing behavior to prevent disease or treating existing disease? So this actually ties into a lot of why I actually want to pursue medicine. If we put our systems in place from the beginning, a solid foundation, we can actually raise generations and lifestyles of people who may have more control of their health so they won't even face these frustrations that people don't realize accumulate from years and years of dietary neglect and inactiveness. I believe that can mitigate a lot of symptoms that people face later in life that compromises quality of life. I went over. <laughs> you have one more. Oh, cool. Sick. I think my personal thing I would say about myself is I like how I had examples, but I wish I was more concise and powerful in my words. Yeah, I noticed that too. Like, I think you have plenty of examples and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just like there are periods when it's just like mm -hmm. it's strong and then it becomes like, oh, where are we going mm -hmm. a little bit with this? Mm -hmm. But then you like overwhelm, like the summary thing is, oh, yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's where uh -huh. we were and stuff. How do you think I can fix yeah. those moments where I'm just not there? I think it's really, it's really going back to answering the question, question. because it's like, I think you got lost. Like, I think the example with my life, it, it hurt. didn't hurt you, but then it detracted from the power of your answer mm -hmm. because there was like a strong focus on like her. I think like you wanted to communicate the humanity of her, like being able to be there for her kids or like be yeah. there and stuff, but it's like. I think you did like four points or something like that. Yeah, but I didn't really emphasize having a conversation for her, like what lifestyle changes and like like tangible results that came about that. Like that would be really powerful to say. Yeah. You can't lie. Or like you could even say yeah. like, you know what, like this is just a really good lesson that I learned. Like sometimes like even with these systems in place, like there isn't always success. But the fact that we like create these systems and like mm -hmm. we bias patients towards success and prevention like that's ultimately where i want to go like there's always going to be failures mm -hmm. in it but it's like if you can wholeheartedly bias the system towards this mm -hmm. then this is the future that i'm passionate about and that i want to do because the, it's a great example that your patient actually didn't do yeah. well yeah because it takes two to tango at the end of the day yeah i wish for maturity and perspective yeah great like yeah. hardcore yeah like keep the spotlight on you and like yeah. the spot like the what? concrete details on like how you answer the question but okay. i think content was like really good and you'll watching your video you'll be like oh you're good right oh now. shoot <laughs> yeah i mean this is good feedback i think i definitely needed to hone in on that structure of this is your question mm -hmm. this is my answer and like yeah like i'm gonna qualify this answer. like there's definitely another point to this yeah but i believe my answer because of my previous experiences yeah like, what i want to do so kind of like question, kind of restate it, bad insight, second answer, three, qualifying other perspective, four, um, but my point again, Yeah. and then overall, yeah, yeah.
that'll help. That's kind of like the thinking tree format you guys did before, but less structure. People just appreciate that brevity. You can answer it, and then sh you show your your insight by acknowledging the other side. Mm -hmm. So you also show your insight by applying yourself or like explaining like this is why I believe it. Mm -hmm. Suppose I'm on a day out in London with a group of my friends, but one of the members actually gets lost, who has never been to London before. So this question kind of wants me to detail the actions I would take from this moment. Upon realizing that, hey, one of us is not here, immediately I would want to group all the members that are here. Those are the exact steps that I would take, gathering everyone up, kind of pulling from everyone the information we have at hand to best locate that person, and having everyone understand how crucial it is to find this missing member, depending on if it was safe or not. But let's say, before even traveling on this feat, I personally find that when there are systems in place, it kind of puts things at ease. So in terms of preventing the situation from happening and creating the sense of urgency or panic, I would want us to kind of establish a common base that would just increase our chances of finding this lost member. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Your <laughs> Prompt that I was given was, imagine that I'm in a scenario where I'm working on a group project with five other students. There is one person that consistently does not contribute but on the day of our presentation, this person tries to take credit for contributing to the project when they, in fact, did not. As you can imagine, there are multiple perspectives. The overall goal of what I would want to do or leave the situation is just I had to do a project, so now this new responsibility is on me. But I decided moving on, I don't have any resentment towards, man, we should have had action earlier, or man, this situation really is unfortunate that now we're so limited in time and scope to execute this project. I see it as, okay, now that this is my responsibility and I have this foresight and insight to doing as much good, let's open conversations, let's collaborate, let's just be transparent with each other and work together to make the best out of the situation. Yeah, that's a little bit about me.